This is the original eSport racing game. This is iRacing. From Donington Park, it's the Global Sim Racing Channel's Round 8 coverage of the Advanced Mazda Cup 2019 Spring Season Championship. A championship that has played out like picking petals off a flower. He wins today, he wins today not. The he referred to is none other than the MX-5 Maestro Sonny Canton, who has found victory in every other race this season, first to the checkered flag for rounds two, four, and six. The odd round victories have been shared by defending champion Robert Hartley, DJ Alessandrini, Luis Calderon, and Little Bird Sardub. Round eight is an even number, so if the flower petals are to be believed, Canton is destined to be first to the checkered flag yet again. He wins today, he wins today not. Find out now as the strength of field MX-5 action can be seen live as it happens right here on the Global Sim Racing Channel via the iRacing Esports Network. England swings like a pendulum do. Hello and welcome high up in the press box to bring you our words eye view Joe Peake, joined by yours truly, Bill Soupson. John Crackers Ambrose has director duties armed with cameras provided by Dougie Beard. Okay, drivers will get to enjoy simulated authentic fish and chips just once this season with only one UK track on the schedule. It's not Silverstone, it's not Brands Hatch, nope. Batter up the haddock, season the potatoes, and deep fry them in some Donington oil. Joe, tell us a little bit about today's racetrack. Absolutely. Donington is a circuit most associated with the European Grand Prix back in 93 and sent his famous drive in the wet. But the history of this place goes all the way back to the 30s. Unfortunately, it was shut down for a while until it got revived in the 70s. But since then, it's really become one of the more popular tracks in the UK. With everything from touring cars to formula cars, just about anything they can throw on it, they know how to bring the fans in. Because they don't just serve up racing, concerts also get held here from time to time. But the excitement on track uh, to get the fans on their toes won't necessarily be a lot of back and forth passing. These 10 turns offer up only two heavy braking zones. Considering it's a mere two miles long and laps are just under 80 seconds, this is gonna be comparable to a bigger Lime Rock Park or Okayama. Uh, passing will be cheerworthy, and just to show you what the thrills will be like from the driver's perspective, let's hop on board the GSRC lap guide. All right, we've got Alex Simonic in the GSRC MX-5, so let's do a lap around Donington. Redgate should be a good chance to pass, but you have to avoid the temptation to mash the power back down too quickly. It's easy to understeer off wide on the exit, and it's not uncommon to see someone pull the over-under. From there, you fly down three trainer curves, and it's mainly about straightening them out to minimize how much speed you scrub off. But at the end of it, you've got to hold left to give yourself the best entry into the old hairpin. Despite its name, this is a very fast corner. You're not likely to see many overtakes on the way in, but like the first turn, if you outgun your opponent on the way out, you can beat them up the hill. Under Starkey's Bridge, you'll take these couple kinks as one long arc until you again hug the left side. McLean's is incredibly tricky with its blind crest and tightening radius. Keeping the car steady and nailing the apex is a handful. From there, it's a short burst up to Coppice. It's another very blind corner, but this time it opens up on the exit instead. Drivers will need to gradually apply the throttle and build up as much speed as they can. It'll be important now that we've reached Starkey Straight. This is one of the few spots you might get a whiff of the draft off of the car ahead. But if you're thinking of sending in a late dive, it might be better to go for a safer move. The final chicane at Goddard's is a single file affair, and that's going to get messy if anyone tries to drive it side by side. Power off the corner, drift back across the track, and hopefully you've now finished a lap around Donington.
The appendage has been amputated. That's the national circuit as Joe Peak takes us around Donington. Let me take you a lap around the point standings. Keep in mind that these numbers take you into account three of the four drop races allowed for in the rules. In other words, it's the driver's best four of seven results. Sonny Kanchen is the only driver in the top five with a win this season, owning three. Other winners, Luis Calderon, he's in 12th. Robert Hartley's right behind him in 13th. DJ Alessandrini's in 24th. And coming off a win at the ring, Sara Dove jumps up a whopping 108 points, but still sits 30th in the points. So despite the magic of drop races, those four drivers join the flaming sword arm Dothraki in the knowledge that magic, be it from drop races or from the Red Woman, only goes so far. Canadians sit second and fourth in the form of Mike Dam and David Payton. The Greek streak, Ionis Mumilidis, has a comfortable 165-point lead in total points. But again, total points mean nothing when you only get to count your best eight. See that zero by Clifford Evans' droplet? That means he's burned up all of his drop insurance. He'll need to be careful. Any bad result will be counted from here on out. All right, that takes care of the points. Joe, you want to talk a little bit about uh, the event details? Absolutely. We are in round eight, and you mentioned those four drop weeks starting uh, to be added there. You could see them on the graphic. Now, this is a sprint format for this one, so only 25 minutes and no pit stops scheduled. Now, you can go into the pits to get repairs, uh, but you'll have no spare car uh, to save you. Obviously, it'll set you way back. The setups are open, and there can be a little bit of speed found in that. We'll talk about the speed in a little bit, because that'll be important in the qualifying. They have an incident cap of 17. Drivers can get disqualified, especially with such quick lap times and so many spots where it'll be tempting to push wide. And they're using the official iRacing points, the strength of field points that are calculated for uh, each round to determine the championship. Bill? Look at that beautiful British sky pushing down on the racetrack here. Looks like a good day to go racing. Joe, let's get the specific numbers and take a look at our weather. Well, it's a little warm on track, not super hot, thankfully, but it's still going to be a concern. It's 92 degrees on the track surface. Now, the reason that that is a concern is before this uh, qualifying session in the warm-up and the practice, some of the drivers were talking about that it's the first lap that really you got to nail it on. You're not really likely to get a faster lap on your second lap uh, because the tires just get worn out so much around here but that's what I was hearing. I, I can't attest to it myself. I'm not good enough really to experiencing uh, that and really see if it's true. But the reason that that's big is because, Bill, it is so hard to pass today. In other words, you've not only got to get your qualifying right, you've got to get your qualifying right on the first lap. The best of the best in the iRacing World Championship, as well as many top private leagues like the one you're watching right now, are showcased right here on the iRacing Esports Network. If you haven't done so yet, make sure that you subscribe. GSRC is proud to be part of the IESN stable of broadcasters. Qualifying going on out there. A lot of big names here today. Calderon, Hartley, Kanchen, Alice Adrini. Winners all. There's only a couple left that uh, are waiting to get uh, one of their lap times in just because it's so quick around here. I think Lucas Loyarte is going to be one that still needs to get his time in as he hasn't come around. I think he's on his first timed lap now and coming uh, on his way up through the old hairpin under Starkey's Bridge. Looking at Lloyd now, who comes down the main straight. Lloyd not able to improve on that second lap, it looks like, Bill. One of the dichotomies of iRacing is a little smaller feel, little few drivers turned out for this one, which means that it didn't split, which in turn means that our grid is going to be large, Show as this is the only game in town right now. we got a big field, about, what, 27 here tonight. And that means that uh, not only is it going to be difficult if you wind up at the back, uh, it also means if you're at the front, Bill, you're going to have to lap cars and you're going to have to hope that people cooperate. That might offer up the opportunity some of these drivers are looking for, for passes. If someone's distracted or just uh, winds up catching someone at the wrong spot, you got to uh, be aggressive and try to take what you can get. Cannot wait to see some of these fast drivers have to deal with some of the back markers, especially in this 
this is while it is a league it's open it's not like these are guys that are used to racing it you can get guys who show up that you don't know before qualifying really really important here today as some tracks it really doesn't matter as it's going to be a draft track and it doesn't matter whether you qualify eighth you can still get your way around not the case today being up top really really important and what else is important around this time of year, Bill, but Mother's Day? It'll soon be upon us. If you want to find a unique gift for mom and do some good at the same time, we have a great option for you. Block Industries employs men and women who need a second chance in life. Block trains individuals in job and life skills, and these individuals use the skills they are taught to create unique handmade gifts that mom will love. Block is working to change a community one life and one job at a time. Check out their Etsy page at etsy.com slash shop slash block industries. Enter coupon code iRacing at checkout and you can save 10% on a great gift for mom or yourself. Once again, that is etsy.com slash shop slash BLOC industries. That's BLOC, no K, and a coupon code iRacing to save 10% or see the link on our YouTube page. Setting the reminder on my phone right now to do that as soon as this race is over. It won't be long. This is a short race, only 25 minutes. I'm going to go see what I can get for for Mama Jean, my 96-year-old mother-in-law. It's hard to find anything to get her, so I'm going to check that out. Looks like qualifying is up. Let's go to the grid right now. It is a large field. Big names up front. On the pole is Luis Calderon. He's going to be inside of Robert Hartley. Defending champion is Hartley. Sonny Canchin and DJ Alice Adrini go third and fourth. Ivan Garcia and the Sheriff, Jordi Fike, in sixth position. The next row is Rodrigo Capoletto and the Greek streak, Jonas Munilidis in eighth. Keith Lloyd and Derek Holland back in the tenth spot, Joe. Andre Bertoni starts in 11th with Michael Wartman next to him in 12th, and it's Kota Miwa in P13. Lee Martin will start in the 14th position, and Jay Steffi in 15th. Then it's David Warner starting 16th, and Paul Barbuza in P17. Riley Downey starts 18th, and 19th will be Juan Vacahalme, and Luis Velasquez will be in 20th. Michael Haynes and Daryl LaHaya in the 22nd position. Tyler Brillier and Chad Killingsworth in the double dozen position. Lucas Larte in the 25th position. Felipe Carrera and Ivan Solar. The last three drivers did not put in qualifying times. 24 did. Last one being Chad Kingsworth. Bad news for the rest of the field. Bill uh, Calderon was four tenths faster than Hartley. There is a draft here. Calderon might have a hard time pulling away, but the draft is not so heavy that it's going to make passing easy. We might have to see people wait until they come up on the back of lap traffic. That'll be exciting to see how that plays out. A big grid, a small track, and a lot of talent up top. A few names in, in the qualifying that were a little bit unusual. The Greek streak back in eighth position, a little farther back than we might expect to see him. Derek Holland in 10th. I think he's got to be happy with that one. You can hear those little Mazda engines start to harmonize. Gather up the chickens. Take cover behind the cows. The horses are out of the barn. And it is Calderon up in front leading the stampede down into the first corner. Hartley right behind him. A battle for second and third between Ketchin and Allison. So like Kanchin's going to come out on top, but is he going to stay there because he went way wide? Here comes Garcia with a good run because of that, and it's allowing the top two to really streak away. Calderon and Hartley nose to tail, but now with almost a second lead, Garcia works up into third position. Kanchin now under attack by DJ Allison. The battle is for fourth car you saw off in the background that was Jay Steffi we'll get back to him in a minute but this is really good news for Hartley if he can just get the two of them fighting together oh, catch it catch in it off the again. he got together with Alice Drini coming into the corner it, it kind of ruined his corner entry he managed to gather it up he now gets into the back of Capoletto he's off into the grass again he's losing a spot to the Greek streak and Keith Lloyd Ooh. now gets the pass and a car spinning on the first lap that uh, is Riley Downey. Yep, yeah, that was because of the checkup, essentially, from Kanchin. Uh, there was a car that got into the back of him. I think it was Andre Bertoni, actually. 
and just everybody behind him accordioned. And unfortunately, not everybody got the memo, and Downey was the one that came out the worst. Oh, and I think now he's got a slowdown. Kanchin is off. Boy, he's back. This is a disaster for him. We talked about the drop races that he's been using up. There are not a lot left for him. Give Bertoni a little bit of a pass on that. I believe it was Michael Workman who, uh, Workman who actually got into that driver. All this going on behind Calderon and Hartley who have checked out. And for some reason, Kanchin is just staying put on the front stretch. He's he's really got to get out of there soon because he's sitting on the racing line, which is right at the exit of the chicane. This may be kind of a, a wave your fist moment of the guys who put him there, perhaps. How about a tip of the hat to Ivan Garcia, up to third, picked up two spots from where he gridded, and with pretty good pace. A second behind Hartley. Kanchin talking, I couldn't hear him because I was talking, but he had something to we, say. We couldn't repeat it on air, I'm afraid. Uh -oh. <laughs> he wasn't happy about that opening lap. As we ride on board with Garcia, trying to keep a uh, toe with these two. If anything, I think Alessandrini and Garcia need to kind of work a little bit together here, not fight too much because it looks like they might be able to regain ground on Hartley, but if they start battling, that's that's a lost cause. Okay, so we've talked about your front four. Let's talk about the the back half of your top 10. We'll start with Jordy Fike in fifth. Nice run from the Sheriff. He's being chased by Capoletto. Now back in seventh is the Greek streak Jonas Mumilidis looking for points. He sits second in the in the uh, net points right now, so he's looking for a big day as he races behind Capoletto. Yeah, and it's it's not only surprising that Mumilidis uh, started so far back, but he hasn't really gained spots since the start. Not sure if he's just stuck back here, but he's really got to make inroads soon uh, because right now he's being held up, and those in front of him are, are just pulling a big gap. Want to take you back to a great battle. Let's go back to 10th position. They are side by side right now. So this is uh, on the outside, Miwa and Martin on the inside. Jim. Yeah, and they're going to come up to Coppice, which is really hard on its own. Miwa knows that he tries to back out of it. He almost loses out to Bertoni now due to that. And Bertoni might have a dive up into Goddard's. Not sure. Yeah, it looks like he's going to be a little too far back. If I was him, I wouldn't send it in at this point used to this track this is where the chicane usually goes left right and sends you off into that like appendage that's on here we don't have that right now we go right left and right to the start finish line martin miwa and bertoni racing 10th 11th and 12th tony had the run but he wasn't good enough to get it uh, right up beside him that uh that first corner is really hard to nail just because it's a super late apex and that's why we saw a couple of drivers off in the first lap. They're pushing it so hard. It's kind of a corner where it's it's actually better to try and pass by taking the outside line and pulling the over under. Those four battles. Now we go to third position. These guys are racing in order. This is Garcia and Alessandrini. Alessandrini already has a win. We know that he is fast. I think he would like to get a shot of getting around the nine car and make it take a shot of running down Hartley. The gap is 2.2 and growing. Let's see this pass right now. He's got to, he's got to run. Let's see if he forces it in here. This is the place to do it. Hmm. Mm, I see. See, I don't think this is necessarily the place. It's better to maybe set them up coming off of here and try to complete the pass down the front stretch. And if you can't do that, like I said, look for the outside line. He's got to run. Let's see if he takes my advice. He's trying to. Now he ducks down inside. He's going to have a bow. Look at the room that Garcia gives him if he wants it. Left him a little room to the inside. No pass made there. The, the Garcia knew better. He knew that he should not give him that outside line because he needs that nice wide entry. And that's what kept him ahead. Oh, down into the old hairpin. A surprise attack. Look at that. There you go. All right, let's mark down the interval. It is three seconds now from Alessandrini in front of these. He can leave Garcia alone. Garcia wants that spot back. You can't really bump draft on your way up there. It's a curve. You really shouldn't try that. Unless he was just upset at that move and was maybe giving him a little uh, piece of his mind. My goodness, look at this craziness in 10th, Bill. They've been yeah, they swapping back and forth all over the place. 
Derek Holland has to be happy to be out in front of the nonsense going on behind Miwa back there. The booze are racing oh. as well. There goes Miwa off into the beach. Gather it up. He loses a spot to Berbuza. He loses one to Michael Workman. Andres Bertoni gets it as well. Yeah, that's such a blind entry into that corner. It's really easy if you're distracted, looking at the cars behind to miss your braking point and just slide off into that gravel. Look at the replay. And, and as, oh, we're the, the, as that's going on, can we go up to fifth position real quick? We're gonna leave this behind. I wanna talk about the man who's on the charge. Jonas Mumelidis, he got around Capoletto. He just got around Jordi Fike on the front straight, and now he is setting his sights on what would be uh, Ivan Garcia, that interval three and a half seconds. And if Garcia and Alessandrini keep that up, it'll be a lot easier for the, him to catch them. The question is, can he actually get by? Let's go back to 12th. I don't mean to jump you around so much, but here comes Bertoni on Workman. This is the guys we've been watching. This is where all the action is. He cannot make it happen. Koto Miwa trying to come back after his uh, David Hasselhoff trip through the sand. Right back in there behind Bertoni. Yeah, there's just not a lot of breaking into McLean's, and it's, it's also a really awkward entry. So you usually don't want to try passes there, especially since you're coming in from what is effectively the outside when it switches to the inside. You really need a phenomenal run like he's got right here, Bill. Yeah, this is some good-looking racing going on, but he's going to wait. He's going to back out. And you saw he took a lot of curb. You can do that in these cars. You can be aggressive. It's really the second apex that you got to watch out. Oh, and Bertoni cut the oh, course. He He's did a penalty. Going by is Miwa. Going by is Korea. Also making a move on the outside. That's Lucas Lu uh, Luarte trying to make it in the number eight car. I think he might be able to stop it there. He's going to be on the outside when it switches back to the left here in the Craner curves, but he's going to have the inside into the old hairpin, but he's not brave enough on the brakes. Wow. Oh, but he's going to get it back. Loyarte overshot it. Great racing going on. As always, this is where the action is. They continue to race side by side. Up front. Let's look at this battle here. It, it's uh, Barbusa. And Wartman, I believe, is where we want to go. Holland also in a battle with Martin right now. We're looking at that one. Side, be side behind him, though, is Wartman. There you yeah. see that. We're watching Holland, but yeah, we need yeah. to get back Pinata to that battle. full of bees coming at you. The front car is Wartman. The car on driver right is Miwa. You can see how much time they're losing. This is going to be really bad news for our leaders if they keep this up. And look at how much this allowed Loyarte and uh, Bertoni to get a run. They're going to go three wide down to Redgate. This is not going to end well unless they sort this out. They do. That was Loyarte in the middle like Odysseus between the devil and the deep blue sea. But it works out okay for him. Yeah, he comes That's out on top Odysseus of all three. Well. Yeah. But yeah, the, as soon as the leaders start catching this big group, if they're still fighting, oh. it, yeah, that's going to be an absolute nightmare for them to pick their way through and not get into trouble. All right, now let's catch our breath. Now let's go up the one we want to look at. This is Martin and Holland because this one is good as well. This is a battle for ninth. Holland's just kind of stalking him right now. We're right on board with Martin. I wonder if uh, Holland is just maybe kind of sizing him up, figuring out where he's weak, where it'd be a good place to try and outrun him off the corner. Again, there's so few heavy braking zones. If you think forward, sometimes you can have a much easier time completing a pass. Not missing anything up front. The front three have separated themselves. Mumelides is beginning to run down Garcia, though, but that'll be a few laps from now. And, and ahead of Martin, Lloyd must have had a slowdown, but let's we're going to the lead because that's getting awful close. Boy, I just checked it a minute ago. Calderon must have made a mistake. He was well out in front. Here comes Hartley right behind him now. He had at least a 10 or 11 car lead when I last talked about it, so Hartley in the mix. 
Almost four seconds up though on Alessandrini. I'm checking to see. The most I can see is that lap traffic just got in the way of Calderon. And it did give Hartley a bit of an opportunity, but he couldn't complete the pass. This was many laps ago, so uh, probably can't find it on the replay. Even still, he's making good on what chances he's been given because he's still clinging right to the back of well, him. Let's stay on this because now they come up on Daryl oh, Lear. Oh no! And he clips him! And that's almost exactly what happened last time, except last time uh, Calderon actually had to check up. This time he could, kept his foot planted in it, and unfortunately that lap car was in the wrong place at the wrong time. Now it might have been just a case of closing speed on this one. I just, I think Liera might have got off and lifted a little bit, and I think that would fooled people. Yeah, and it's, you don't want to lift when no. you're on the racing line. He tried to avoid him. Yeah, it's just that's just miscommunication. That's the nature of the beast of this type of racing where it's where it's an open invitation. You're racing against drivers you don't know. Mumalitis makes a mistake, goes off in the grass, but we're okay. We Go had uh, Downey and Solar, I think, in a in an incident in the final chicane. I think they came together. Downey got the worst of that one as he spins off onto the inside. This is Downey trying to make the pass. Yeah, just clipped him wrong. That actually might have already hurt his suspension before he even slammed it in the tires like that. Both of them certainly lost a lot of time. We come back live. Now there is clear traffic now for Calderon. He doesn't have to worry about any anything happening. Jay Steffi is the next driver he's going to get to, but Steffi's got about oh about a turn lead ahead. He'll get there soon enough, though. Hartley's doing exactly what he needs to do. Just stay with him. Wait for stuff like that to happen with lap traffic. An opportunity might present itself. It might not, but you got to be there to take advantage of it. And with him being about half a second behind, uh, he's going to be able to try and do something. <laughs> oh, boy. Mumelitis, though, is pushing the boundaries of the circuit, you can see. He is. He is indeed. Remember, there is an incident cap, so he has to be careful. Mutalitas was pulling away from Fike. He made a mistake, and that brought Fike back into the mist. Jordy having a good run, watching the whole thing as Capoletto back there. Joe, with just under 11 minutes to go, I don't think the excitement's going to tone down any, so why don't we pay a little bills here and get our Trip and Dree's backmarker shout-out out of the way as uh, we have a large field. Give a little love to some of these drivers we haven't talked about yet. All right. I guess we'll go to the first car that is not a lap down, Jay Steffi. Uh, he is sitting in 24th. Uh, looking to improve on his 15th position start, but it's looking like he's going to have a lot of hard work to do to do that. Michael Haynes is in front of him, is pretty much exactly where he started, is all by his lonesome out on track currently. Baka Haume is uh, currently in 19th, also exactly where he started on the grid, just running his own thing, seeing if he can uh, take advantage of a lot of the action that's happened in front of him. Ivan Solar is P18. He is a big gainer, but he didn't get a qualifying time in, so he wouldn't meet your standards, unfortunately, Bill. Uh, these are all going to jump up one position. So it's 17th right now, but we got a car in the pits as uh, Luisa Valasquez is uh, moved up three positions since his start. And then Felipe Corriera in uh, 16th position started 26 also didn't get a qualifying time in all the way up to p16 and that is going to close out our back marker review okay with that let's go up front is a total opposite of what we just did as we have the leaders going around a car of jay steffi just joe started his back marker review with him jay now goes a lap down calderon still leading hartley for some reason, we've had a couple cars in the pits. Capoletto took a stop. I'm not sure why. Valesquez also has been in and out. Maybe they didn't fuel the car enough because it was very short on both ends. Going back to see if there was any contact or an incident that I missed, but... Man, I tell you what, Miwa has been in all the yeah. action. Oh, oh Miwa gets him. turned! And I think blinking away was the car that got him. That was uh, 
Lucas Luarte. I think he hit the instant cap on that one. A little justice from the racing gods, I guess. Wonder if he uh, met the incident cap. Yeah, actually. that's what I think happened. He was able to continue, but uh, multiple positions have slipped through his finger due to that. There's Lorty, and you're going to see him vanish into the Amelia Earhart Bar and Grill. We come, we come back live on Miwa in the uh, racing in 14th, chasing. Rodrigo Capoletto. And this is uh, why you have to push all the way to the finish, because you just don't know what's going to happen ahead of you. Someone might have an incident. Someone might blink out. You, in that case, you might even want to stay on the lead lap in case the driver ahead of you hits the incident limit. There are so many battles going on. Let's check back in on this one. It, this the number of cars that showed up was a boon. I think if we only had about 15 or 16, Bill, this would have been the quiet race. Well, not quiet necessarily, but the lack of passing race that I predicted. But because everything's so chaotic, the, there are people making mistakes, there are people battling, and that is opening doors that Whoa. drivers are desperate to take, just like right the here. Mistake. Derek Holland had been following Lee Martin the entire race. Waiting for Lee to do just what my fellow commentator just said there, Joe. That was that's some good commentating. <laughs> that's a lucky guess, I suppose. <laughs> now, can can Holland catch up to Lloyd? Because they've been reeling the number 18 in bit by bit. And this is going to be a good eye rating uh, haul for Keith because he's car number 18 and he's running in the top 10 right now. I'm going to leave this battle. I want to take you up to fourth position. This is one we've been documenting. Ivan Garcia, who's had a good run, but here he comes. This is Iona's Mumilides, looking for points with catch and having issues. I talked to Mumilides before the race. He's very aware of the championship. He, has, he is racing big picture in mind. And if he can pick up a few more points, that's going to help him. He knows that catch is when it comes to drop race insurance. They're going to come up on the back of Luis Vel uh, Velasquez here. Let's see how that plays out. So did they run out of pedals on the flower then, Bill? Because I, I wasn't uh, yeah, I guess so. due to win. That's right. That's why you should never <laughs> base anything on how many pedals are left on a rose. That's for sure. Here they come. Let's see what Luis does to get out of the way in the 19 car. This is a really tough spot to get out of the way because the, the racing line comes across the track and he's not going to lift. So he's going to get in the way of Mumalides yeah. and... Oh man, that hurt the uh, Greek driver a lot. But honestly, I'm not sure he did his very tough. He, we don't want to slow down too much or you're going to get caught up in stuff. Sometimes they just catch it a bad thing. Garcia gets it. Mumalitas gets caught, but they're not done yet. They come up on behind Michael Haynes, Haynes now. Sometimes, Let's go ahead and stick with this for a bit. Sometimes that comes down to experience and knowing how much you need to lift and, and where exactly the cars are, but he's going to get it all back. Due yeah. to lap traffic, it's oh, Michael but, Haynes. But Mumalitas was really loose doing a little bit of drifting there. He's going to lose all of his momentum. He's still gaining a little bit. He is. Oh, he's back now. He is back now. <laughs> behind them. Yeah, that's, almost... a, that's for a position, and Haynes spins. Uh, a... What was it for a position? Oh, yes, yeah, so, yes, it, yes it was. They're a lap down, yeah. Take a look at this. This is for 18th position. They are a lap down. Both these drivers got out of the way to let Garcia and Mumalides go through. And then that. I don't think there was any contact. It looks like the Floridian just kind of drifted a little bit wide and lost control of the car, being surprised by the car suddenly up to his inside. Tip the hat to Tyre Bro uh, Tyler Broyles as he gets out of the way in the number 27. Boy, let's go up front and look at this. This is this Hartley, I guess he's just gonna wait. I don't know if there's an opportunity. I think if there was one, he would take it. Well, they've got two battling cars in front of them, uh, Vacahome and Cordillera. That's for position. And th I th they're definitely gonna catch him before this race is over, especially with him going side by side in a few quarters. Oh, but it looks like they may yeah. have settled it out now. Vakahami very much off the pace. That's going to be good news for the leaders as they come up. 
Don't know much about Vakahalme. I rating of 1762 above mine. <laughs> that doesn't say much. <laughs> Here they come. Apologies to Juan if we're getting that last name wrong. I, I took my wildest stab at it. Uh, you nailed it. That's my story. I'm sticking with it. We are getting close. Just over three minutes of racing to go. Lap times of a minute 17. We haven't been able to cover it much, but I just want to point out, I've been seeing a lot of drivers with slowdown penalties today, and that's not just through the final chicane. Coming through coppice and places like that, it seems like drivers are cutting it way too close, and that's been a lot of the position changes we've seen, or at least have missed, I guess you could say. Have not had a lot of attention on Keith Lloyd. He's had a nice, quiet race. Started in ninth, up two spots in seventh. Derek Holland, we saw Holland get around Martin, and now he'd like to do that the same to Lloyd. Credit to Lloyd, though. He's uh, He's been holding his own. Oh, let's go up front. Oh, our They're leaders, side by yeah. Side. Hartley made a stab at him. He can't get it done, but no, now that's, he's got it. No, that's Carrera. That's Carrera next to him. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> it was a lapped car, but it, it was significant because it held him up. It, it worked out perfectly for Calderon because he managed to sneak through and take the normal race line just in time, and Hartley couldn't do that. With only two minutes of racing to go, with apologies to the rest of the field, we're going to focus most of our attention here in these final couple minutes on the leaders. They come up behind Daryl Yeah. This is the same driver this, that had trouble with Kanchen. And and this is this this shows with the traffic and how oh. much it can play into it. Hartley once again getting the bad end of the stick. They're they're hitting them thick and fast, and I think they might get one more before all is said and done. It's Ivan Solar ahead of them. Boy, Solar seems so far out in front, but the pace these guys are racing. This is good news for Calderon. Other than Ketchum looking to become our first multiple winner this season. Quickly back to uh, this battle here for fourth. Once the Greek streak got around Garcia, Garcia did not uh, surrender the Casper. He's still hanging on him. Yeah, but he's not threatening right now. He's going to have to hope for some of that traffic that certainly seems to be in abundance. And uh, looking around, I don't think they're going to come up on any anytime soon. We're going to get the white flag of the line, and our leader has his first bit of breathing he can do for quite a while. It's The gap is over a second. Robert Hartley, the defending champion, trying to run down Luis Felipe Calderon. Yeah, they're going to get across the line just with a few seconds left. So hopefully they calculated their fuel right. Oh, and looks like Holland's got it. Look at that. Once again, a, a mistake. And, and it's the same corner. Not quite the exact same situation. It almost looks like Lloyd lets him have it when he sees the writing on the wall. Yeah, because he was a little slow off the corner. He didn't want to go side by side in the hairpin, so he just kind of lifted and let him through in the craner curves. We come back looking at Derek Holland now, who's worked his way up. Up into seventh now. White flag is out. Our leader has a 1.3 second lead on Robert Hartley. I don't think the defending champion is going to have much for Calderon. Alessandrini comfortable in third. Go, Joe. He's still got to run a, a, a perfect half a lap here at the end. We've seen the slowdown penalties. We've seen the lap traffic, both of which are still ahead of him. So he could still throw this away. He's got to run well. And sure enough, again, Joe said it would happen. And here they come up on the back of uh, Ivan Solar. I think he's going to pull gonna catch him off in a pretty maybe. Good spot. Oh, maybe not. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that's sweet. That boy, that was a long story. Away. Plenty of time to lift and get out of the way. They're going to catch him right here at the final corner, but I think it's going to be a case of too little, too late. Round number eight of the Advanced Mazda Cup. 
goes to Felipe Calderon here at Donington. Hartley gets second. Alessandrini gets third. Mumalidis able to hold off Garcia. Let's look at that. This one's going to be close. Oh, there's slap traffic in front of him. Somebody blinks into the twilight sign. Mumalidis is going to get fourth. Garcia will get fifth. And I think that was Corriera, actually, that blinked out. Let's look at Lloyd and Holland. Lloyd trying for all of his might to get that spot back as they head into the final chicane. Well, he He's might have it. Run off of it. Start finish line is coming. It's going to be close. No, Holland hangs onto that spot by the hair on his chinny chin chin. No, Lloyd got it. Lloyd has scored in front of him. Oh, Lloyd got him. Two one hundredths between them at the line. Guess that hair was longer than I thought. Ninth and 10th, Lee Martin and Bertoni are comfortable in that position, rounding out the last cars on the lead lap. Workman, Capoletto, Miwa, Barbusa, and the 15th car, well, actually 14th. Barbusa's the last one on the lead lap. I'm gonna take another look at this one from above. See, I thought that was this finish line right there. I didn't know it's up here is the one. Yeah, it's, it's the there very it last line yeah. you see, yeah. This one. There you go. Incredible. Right. Nice run. That was a tough break for Holland. All right. With the racing out of the way, what we're going to do right now is take a short break. But don't go far. We will be back to run down the entire finishing order, talk to some of the drivers. And, of course, before we talk to some of the drivers, we will hand out the Queen of the Ball Award, always a fan favorite. Don't go far. You're watching GSRC on IESN. Streaming cyberspace into your place via the iRacing Esports Network. This is the Global Sim Racing Channel's coverage of the Advanced Mazda Cup Strength of Field event, round number eight from Donington. The race is over. Let's give you the entire finishing order now. 
Picking up his second win of the season is Luis Calderon. Congratulations to him. Defending champion Robert Hartley has to settle for second. DJ Alessandrini, hoping for that second win this season, will have to settle for third. A nice run from Ionis Mumilidis. Set second in points. He'll move closer, if not be in the lead, when we come around for round nine next week. Ivan Garcia, very nice run from him. Started in fifth, finishes in the same position. Jordy Fike, the sheriff, in sixth. Keith Lloyd, we're going to talk a little bit about him in a minute. Stay tuned. He gets a seventh position. Derek Holland had a nice run in eighth. The back half of your, the last parts of your top ten, Lee Martin and Andres Bertoni. In 11th, it wound up being Michael Wartman with uh, Rodrigo Capoletto in 12th and Kota Miwa finishing 13th. Paul Barbuza finishes P14 and then Ivan Solar just squeaked by on the lead lap, finishing 15th. Juan Vacahalme is the first car lap down in 16th position. Jay Steffi in 17th and then Michael Haynes in 18th. Felipe Cordiera blinked out on his last lap. That slots him down to 19th. And Luis Velasquez in 20th. In the blackjack position, it was Daryl Liera in the double duck spot, Tyler Broyles. Lucas Larty in 23rd. 24th is Riley Downey. Chad Killingsworth in 25th. 26th, David Warner. And then the last car out there after having some issues, Sonny Kenshin finishes. Uh, with not a lot of points to show for today. All right, before we go to driver interviews, let's take a second and do our fan favorite feature, and that is, of course, Queen of the Ball. What it takes to be Queen of the Ball? Well, it's undefinable, but you know it when we see it, and we saw it tonight. The Queen of the Ball salutes Queenie, a fan and supporter of this series and this broadcast. Well, when you nip somebody at the line for a position, that's Queen of the Ball worthy. We're going to give it today to Keith Lloyd. A nice job from him. Derek Holland got around him on the last lap for that seventh position, but Lloyd did not give up the ghost like any royal would do. He fought back and was able to nix Holland right at the line by just a few hundredths of a second. With that, let's go to our interviews, and we're able to talk to our race winner today. That's going to be Felipe Calderon, if we can bring him down in here. Felipe, congratulations. Luis Calderon, our winner. Hey, Luis, before we go any farther, do you like Luis or Felipe for a first name? Um, I, I want both. Uh, you want I like both? It. Okay. Luis, I like the name. <laughs> all right. Luis Felipe Calderon, our winner second time this season. Uh, boy, lap traffic was the story of this race. Yes, totally. I, I think that it was uh, maybe the, the hardest thing of the race uh, because if you see at the end, uh, the battle for the first position can be as, as we want because uh, of the lapid cars. I win. Thank, uh, thanks for them. Uh, Robert have a, an amazing pace at the end of the race. And uh, obviously I was struggling a bit when, when you go to the chicane and try to overtake uh, the lapid car, I was uh, uh, very scary at that moment and I did uh, uh, too many mistakes in, in those moments. But uh, Robert uh, respect me a lot in this situation, so uh, I am very grateful with him because he, he raced like a gentleman and, and it was a, a very good race in that aspect. Uh, anyways, uh, I think it has to be a thing that maybe uh, you have to be careful, but uh, this time, uh, I have the possibility to to manage the, the teams. In some tracks, qualifying doesn't matter on those draft tracks. But today, being on the pole was a big advantage. Yes, totally. I, I did a very good lap. The, the second lap, uh, I think that it was the fastest. But uh, I was thinking in the race that I will have a, a similar pace that I show in the qualifying. Because if you see, I, I put like... Uh, four tenths uh, to Robert and like uh, five tenths to, to Sonny. Uh, I was a bit struggling with the pace, but obviously uh, the pole position gave me opportunity to cool uh, win, and it was uh, really good. I I approached the, the situation. Donington was the first track that, that I raced in a broadcast uh, at Mazda race, and obviously the, this position is very good to get the win. We'll get you out of here on this one. Let our viewers know what South American country you race out of. Colombia. <laughs> Colombia. There you go. Congratulations. Hope to see you again real soon. Thank you so much for the broadcast and obviously for all the things that uh, you are doing with this because it's really amazing what 
uh, are you doing with, with this job? Well, thank you. You just bought yourself a little extra screen time. All right. Our race winner today, Luis Felipe Calderon. He wants all of it in there. Joe, we can do that for him when you're a winner. Who you got? Bill's handing out bribes here. I've got Ioannis <laughs> Mouboulidis, who finished fourth, just off the podium. Uh, I, I have to think, though, that you're probably at least a little bit satisfied with that, considering you started back in eighth. Did you struggle in qualifying? I did struggle in qualifying. Unfortunately, I made a very big mistake. I changed setups just before this race in the practice session. And um, unfortunately, it wasn't comfortable off the bat when I went into the qualifying session for the SRF. And I threw away about four tenths. So I would have been up in uh, oh, where, where I finished. I would have been up with DJ. Unfortunately, DJ got away before I could catch up again. Knowing that uh, one of your main rivals in the championship, Kanchen, had a really bad day today, uh, it, are you satisfied with fourth or are you, you kind of ruining the fact that you couldn't maximize your points? Um, I am actually very, very great, considering um, that there was hardly Calderon and um, Kanchen and, uh, and DJ. I'm very, very satisfied with fourth. Um, it would have been probably fun to fight with DJ as I did in the race uh, time slot before this race. Um, but this might not have been a victory, not a win, but this might have been the championship actually. Uh, so obviously this is a, a big moment for you coming into today. Uh, all in all though, uh, we talked about how this is the only British track here this season that you guys have to race. Do you like this one or is there a, a different of the British circuits that you think is more your favorite? Uh, I don't like Silverstone and uh, uh, Brands Hatch. Brands Hatch can be fun, but also not fun. Um, the GP track is a nice balance between the uh, two worlds. And I'm going to explain a little quick how what these worlds are. The, Brands, the Indy circuit is just like this one. Now, I like this track a lot. This track fits this car. It's lovely for this car. But as a, as a driver, I'll have to split my liking and my dislike for this track into two categories. From one side, this is a track in which there is not much draft and the person with the fastest pace can walk away. Um, if, there, if two people are close paced, they can have a close race. But this track doesn't really give you any opportunities to overtake. If the person in front drives with his hat and does defensive lines whenever it matters, he will stay in front. Some great stuff there from uh, Ioannis Mumulidis. Uh, congratulations on fourth, and uh, hopefully we'll get to talk to you more the rest of the season. Thanks. Bill? Okay, I have DJ Alessandrini here, who was uh, finished in third position. GJ, uh, Sonny Kenshin was demonstrating his uh, industrial state vocabulary there, and he had some opinions when you got together. We went back and looked at it. I, I, I'm not quite sure what he was seeing. It didn't seem that all that. Uh, what, what were your thoughts? <laughs> well, going into turn one, it looks like uh, Sonny didn't know that there was a right turn there, so I had to avoid him. And uh, then he was under attack from Ivan, which was convenient for me because it allowed me to slip up next to him. And uh, I'm not sure what corner number it is, but heading uh, up the hill, it uh, looks like he hit the dirt and got a little squirrely. And I, I, was, I had uh, an eye on him out of the corner of my eye, so I kind of saw that his car was a lot out of shape. And uh, it, in my, uh, on my point of view, it looked like there was like a foot and a half between our cars, and then his car just kind of wigged out and shot off to the side, and, uh, and it didn't look good, but... But really, uh, I was on the right side of the track when we should have both been on the left side of the track heading into that right-hand corner. So the only reason I was where I was is because I was already avoiding Sonny. So he was all out of shape from the beginning of that race. I'm not really sure. Uh, maybe he was texting and driving. I'm not entirely sure what was going on with him. But but uh, it, it, that was unfortunate just because uh, I knew the only way to even have a chance to take down uh, Felipe on this track was uh, to hang out in his draft and with all the sunny shenanigans, uh, that, that would just wasn't going to be the case. I was hoping that Ivan, uh, when he was in front, would be able to uh, catch Hartley and Calderon uh, since he was just like a couple tenths within the draft. But 
I think there was just uh, one too many mistakes and they just got away. And uh, then I just watched them disappear into the horizon as I had a boring race in third. I'll get you out of here on this one. I want to talk about track. Um, I know a lot of fans like to draft tracks because it, it keeps everybody together. There's lots of passing. But for me, maybe because I'm a racing purist, but uh, see if you agree with this. This this type of race seems more interesting to me with passing harder to do and more strategic. What are your thoughts about this compared to like racing at Spa or someplace? Well, so uh, back when I first started sim racing two years ago, I was on a set of Corsa and I joined a league that was on Reddit and donnington was the the second race of that season and i got destroyed on the first race and i like crashed and stuff because you know you just start sim racing you don't know what you're doing so i put in an insane amount of hours on the set of course a version of donnington so and that's when i was really figuring out how to sim race so donnington holds a special place in my heart just from there and uh it's just one of the best flowing tracks it's just fun you know i i say i had a boring race in third but Man, Donington's just a lot of fun. I could I could lap this track by myself in uh in the Solstice and probably still have a good time. This is just a great track. Uh, we get you. Hey, congratulations on the third place. We'd love to see a race as much as you can. So hopefully we'll see a few more times before the season's out. Yeah, hopefully. Thanks, guys. It was fun. EJ Alessandrini, third place driver out of Ohio in desperate need of a nickname. GSRC with a thank to thank everybody in the advanced Mazda Cup community, especially the sheriff, Jordy Fike for supporting this broadcast. On screen now are some of the equipment and software used to stream cyberspace into your place. Additional thanks to June Milan who provides the iconic music. See the screen to how to get a hold of more of her great work. The Advanced Monster Cup returns in one week. That's gonna be round nine, a 25 minute affair from the Origami Pretzel, more, no, more boringly known as Suzuka. GSRC via IESN will bring you all the action. Sliding across your screen right now are some of the upcoming GSRC broadcasts. So check those out and mark them down on your calendar. Hey, you want more information about us? I got options. GlobalSimRacingChannel.com. Twitter, GSR Channel. Facebook, Global Sim Racing Channel. Instagram at GSRC underscore gram. Also, if you haven't done so yet, become a YouTube subscriber by heading over to our YouTube page and hitting that big red button. Finally, on behalf of the entire crew, that would be Joe, Sean, and Dougie. I'd like to thank all of you for watching as the man with three names, Luis Felipe Calderon, picks up his second win of the season here at Donington. With that said, we're off to have fun storming the castle. So until next time, race clean, race hard, and we'll see you on the track.